with the container image built, we can store that image up in a image repository and then we can use the image later, keep it backed up. We can also allow others to grab the image and they can use it or deploy it as well. And this starts with building the container, which we saw in the last video. And then we'll need some place to put the container, like Docker Hub is an example for illustration. There are other registries as well, like Google Artifact Registry or the Microsoft Registry. Then we will push the container image up to the repository into our account and give it some kind of versioning label so we can keep track of which image is which. In the meantime, we still have our different types of code stored in some sort of a code repository. In the earlier videos, we were using GitHub as an example. So going back to the image we built in previous steps, we can push this up to the repo and we might even write some code to make this a little bit easier. But in the most basic sense, you're just gonna do a Docker push and then you have to name which of these do you want to push up. And you'll notice that they're versioned with these names after the colon and those are the tags. And you can have multiple tags per image. The image itself is actually kept track of by a hash of the image that's gonna be unique. And so you might think of the hash as being the so-called real name of the image, and then these tags are just aliases. We'll take a look at pushing the image here. So we'll do Docker push, and then we have to say again which one we wanna push. And we, the one we built was www. So if we don't give it any other versioning information at all, it's just gonna replace this generic one up in Docker Hub. You'll see that there's different layers that have to be pushed up. And once it's all done, then it'll give you a di digest, which is again, the kind of like the real name of the container up on Docker Hub. If all the different layers exist, it'll tell you that. And you'll see that the layer is already up there and it already has a copy. As far as automating, you can just write a script to automate the push. You can also, uh, with certain professional accounts, automatically have Docker Hub realize that the build code in GitHub has changed. And because of that, fire off a job that'll go ahead and kick off a build process and build a new image and replace the image inside. And it can even do versioning where it automatically increments the version number for you. You typically don't get that type of automation with the free accounts, but you can write your own. An example of something like this would be the script here, push the Docker Hub, which really is just emulating what those professional services would do. So it'll go ahead and it'll put the version number into the version file, push the code up into GitHub, log into Docker, and then it'll create the images using the build no cache that we saw earlier and then it'll create the tags as well so we can have a tag that is just the name of the image plus another tag that not only has the name of the image but the version and we can push those up using the docker push command this is just an example of a script this one here is nothing special but you can see it iterates through all five of the container images that were in the build project, database, database admin, web, LDAP, and LDAP admin. We'll close this and we'll run it. And we have to give it a version. So we would need to know what our current version is and you can just keep that in a version file if you wanna do that current version is 1.0.13. To push the next version, we're gonna do 1.0.14. We'll put in a comment, updated 
PHP 1.0.11. And we have a build flag that decides whether or not we need to completely rebuild the containers or only rebuild them if changes are detected. Since we rebuilt in the last video, we're going to pass in false because we don't need to rebuild that web container again or force a rebuild. Now you can see it's pushing the changes up if necessary. If not, it's just letting us know that the layers already exist. So it's only going to push the changes that are different between the version stored here locally and the version stored up in Docker Hub. Not surprisingly, the container that it's pushing is going to be the web container because that's the one that we made that change to when we changed the version of PHP. This time lapse was probably less than five minutes and most of the images didn't need to be pushed. We only had rebuilt the web one. The other four didn't result in any changes. If we go look at the registries, we should be able to see the changes. So if we go to Docker Hub, we'll go to our repository. And if we look at the tags, we should see the new tag. And there it is. There's 1012. Let's sort them. There's 1014, the newest. And we see it was pushed just a couple minutes ago. And there's the web that was rebuilt. And we had also pushed our new code over into GitHub. So if we refresh this page, we'll see that we have the new code where it says to pull the base image of PHP 8.0.11. Now we have all the different code stored up in the code repos, and we have the image up in the image repo ready to use. In the next video, we'll take a look at running one of these containers.